In the newsreels and in the newspapers, you see a lot about heroes. Flyers who have captured an island single-handed. Sailors who spent 36 days on a life raft. This man isn't from the Air Forces. He isn't a sailor. His name is Patrick McDonald. His mother comes from Ireland, and he speaks with a good Irish brogue. He's a private in the infantry, and he's just been invalided home from Italy. Back home when you heard about Italy, it was the kind of place lucky people would pick for a vacation. I always wanted to go to Italy myself. According to the movies, you drank wine and sat in the sun and listened to the native jug blowers. And the main industry was spaghetti making. The spaghetti was supposed to be the best in the world. Well, we got to Italy, and so what? It wasn't much. We fought so hard and looked so long for a place to sleep and rest our feet that we didn't see anything. Nobody who was with the infantry in Italy will ever get enough sleep again. Back in Sicily, where we took the boats, it was hurry up and wait. Chop, chop, and wait. Hurry up to get on the boats, and then wait. They packed us onto the deck like sardines. And from our deck, we could see ships to the edge of the horizon. On the day before we landed on the beach at Salerno, they told us the Italian government had signed an armistice. We landed during the night and dug in on the beach. Then the carts took the lid off a pail. There was fighting on the beach, and there was fighting up ahead, and there was fighting in the harbor at our backs. For a while, it didn't matter whether you were in the infantry, the Air Forces, or the Navy. The fighting was hot all around. We could hear the big Navy guns and the anti-aircraft guns and the roaring of the dogfighters out at sea. The carts got the range of our boats more than a couple of times, but the Navy guns kept up a running fight with the Germans in the hills behind the shore and the Germans in the sky. The Nazis claimed to have sunk the Savannah. Well, the bombers got a direct hit on a gun tart. They knocked out a lot of men and set some fires, but 20 minutes after the hit, the damage was under control and the Savannah back in the fight again. It was hot on the beach and it was plenty hot a mile out to sea. But the Navy kept the water clear for landing barges, and it felt mighty good to see those reinforcements coming in. First you get your feet wet, then you get sand in your shoes, then you hit barbed wire. There's a lot of snafu in the infantry, and sometimes you're late, sometimes you're early, sometimes you're in the wrong place, and the artillery doesn't show up. All you know about the plan of a campaign is your mission, your child, and the shape of the man in front of you. Italy was supposed to be the kind of place where a man would take Betty Grable for a honeymoon. But with the way landmines were planted there, you wouldn't want to take a dog to Italy. Transportation was also different from the movies. When you got ready to sleep, there was always some fighting to do. It's a good thing the infantry training is tough. Infantry fighting is tougher, and the Nazis weren't firing any blanks, and the machine guns weren't in any frames. The 155s did great work. men didn't have to carry their guns. In the infantry, you carry your own weapons. Before I got into the army, I always wanted to do a lot of traveling in foreign countries. But I never counted on traveling on sore feet, with the gravel in my shoes, sandpapering my blisters. 
I never counted on traveling with my mouth full of dust and a cold K racing sitting on my gut like lead. Now, a lot of guys liked the infantry. Mark Clark's father was a doughboy, and General Clark was born in an infantry camp. He picked the infantry in spite of the trouble he had seen. He'd run a fort a stream, then fly over one. And Italy was full of streams and rivers, and the Nazis pulled a bridge out of everyone. Everything that our air forces didn't hit, the Germans destroyed. Delayed action mines and the rubbish made the work of clearing up communications tricky and dangerous. The Germans wrecked the railroad stock they couldn't take with them and blasted out the road beds. But GI road gangs, old hands from the Pennsylvania and the B&O repaired the beds, set new tracks and kept the supplies moving. The air forces and the artillery can make a mess out of a place, but they can't kill the crowd snipers in the cellars. That's for us. You can break down a lot of walls with a flying fortress, but you can't clean the enemy out of a town. That's for us, too. We captured a lot of Germans, some of them husky kids, all of them pretty cocky, unless they were dead. Italy used to be famous for ruins, but there were fresh ruins in the towns we passed through, made by the Krauts, idiots, and our own 105s. One-time house wreckers from Brooklyn pulled down the half-destroyed buildings. Nobody much hung around to watch, like the crowd that always gathers around back home. There wasn't time. The deeper we cut into enemy territory, the tougher things became. The wounded began moving in another direction, back to the temporary field hospitals behind the lines for treatment and evacuation. Nobody gripes much about the care they got at the field hospitals, and I hear the nurses were swell. From our foxholes, we saw the planes from Africa heading for Naples. And from the hills outside the city, we could hear the bombers nailing their targets. It was a good feeling to know those were our plans. But when their work was done, the Air Force boys turned back and took off for quarters in Africa. We kept on walking. Naples may have looked like something from a bomber, but fighting your way in through the streets, Americans and British, there was nothing but a pile of broken buildings and a smell of smoke. There have been a lot of changes in warfare in the last couple of hundred years, but most of it is still at close quarters. The infantry gets the dirty work that you don't hear much about. There wasn't much left of Naples when we got there, excepting the people. When you're dog tired, and when you haven't washed for a week, it makes you feel good to hear a crowd cheering. For a while, I thought we were real heroes. You do get some idea of what the war is about when you see half-starved civilians, kids without homes or fathers. There weren't many soldiers among the people of Naples, but their city had been a battlefield for months. Many of the old folks had been thrown in jail for talking against Mussolini. You know about total war when you see women bailing their drinking water out of sewers and broken men's. The Germans crossed up the water system before they left Naples. We set up water depots for the city and the MPs did some good for once. The Germans had carried off the city's food stores. We gave the people flour and distributed the bread they baked. You know about war when you see people fighting for bread. The Germans planted delayed action mines through the city.
but that's something for the engineers to worry about. The infantry man can't stay long in any one place. Be washed and shaved, climb the hills outside of town, and hit the road again. The War Department has created a new badge for the infantry man. And any doughboy you see wearing this rifle is a qualified infantryman. If he has the wreath too, he's been slugging it out in a combat area where it's kill or be killed. 